actually it's just here. And walk degrees of when the um, asparagus was planted at different points um, over the years. They've been sending out little seeds in the fall and I keep finding baby asparagus everywhere and then uh, planting them. You can see some of the babies that I've transplanted into this. Um, I'm not going to show you my pond because I'm still upset that it's not done yet, but it's over there. Show them the distance view. It's not done yet, but the pond and the fire pit are on their way. The bamboo survived the winter. Can you hear me? Yep. So our tulips just finished over here. Don't look at my face. And we've planted some sunflower and this year we're planting some quinoa along here that are going to be really beautiful and there's some cosmos growing in here to create like a screen. Um, and here is our potato bed. Some of these are volunteers from last year and the rest are going to be coming up soon. So it's full of potatoes. That back bed there we haven't planted yet. I don't know what we're putting there. I guess we have some leeks in the corner and some Brussels sprouts and then a bunch of weeds for uh, be a pool that we'll put some plants in here. I don't know what yet. Maybe bush beans, something. Um, this is another bed that has a bunch of volunteer. Oh, potato beetles already. No, dude. Um, a bunch of volunteer potatoes from last year that I'm just going to let grow because look at volunteer cilantro. Why grow? Why plant anything when the garden bed will decide for itself what it wants? Um, this is a cool plant that just sort of self seeds. It's called or orach, and you can eat the leaves like um, like greens, just like spinach greens. And then you can also cook the larger leaves, and it just goes everywhere. Um, so over here are these cox plants. So beautiful, and they're really starting to climb these ladders that we put here. And Steve grows hops and harvests it in the fall to brew his own beer which is very cool. And then we have a million volunteer morning glories that are gonna try to buy for space on the ladders. Now, this does not represent a drinking problem. Um, we are collecting glass bottles because we're going to transform the children's fort into a glass bottle house. I know I keep saying I'm gonna do this, but I really am. Um, as if you were for, there for our last Facebook live video, we learned about how this was the Mother's Day path I made when the children were small. And we used to have a, our whole chicken situation here, but now we're going to be putting a trellis thing in and training some um, winter squash on it. And I promise that will happen, even though it looks exactly the same as last time. Let's look at these poppies. They're about to come out. So pretty. Um, we're also storing lots of glass bottles in all of our window wells, which looks really classy. Um, iris is coming, there's more quinoa and sunflowers, pretty little things. Um, there was a wild growing teenager there for a second, but it went away. And so this away, we have, um, we recently had a crisis. Do we, is there any questions popping up? I'm supposed to answer questions. Not yet. Okay. Recently had an epic crisis with our compost pile um, where uh, a, a rat couple moved in and we had a whole situation getting rid of them. Um, but now we're back in business. I love my compost. It's like 20 degrees warmer in here when you open it up. Um, so we've got this thing going. And luckily, actually, the rats helped us out because it forced us to turn our compost. <laughs> So it's really moving along. It's kind of cool. You can see it through the, the glass. And we keep our brown material on the other side. Let's look at that. So whenever we put our kitchen scraps in on the one side, we grab some brown material on this side to, to put a layer on top. Love it. Trumpet vine is starting to leap out up there. Creates a nice screen too. I'm constantly trying to create screens. Uh, goji berry. I planted this and it's starting to look happy. It was looking a little yellowish. Never grew a goji berry before, so I'll let you know how that goes. Um, we have our greenhouse still has a bunch of tomato. How much power do we have left? A lot. Uh, we have our water barrel system that's fully set up with our little janky thing going on. Um, little collaboration Steve and I made there. 
the fish are happy swimming about. We just did a um, final harvest of our early arugula crop and I made some arugula pesto that I put in the freezer for winter. Garlic growing strong, we'll be harvesting that in July. Any remaining seedlings in there? We've got some tomatoes that don't quite have a home yet. Get this beautiful snow in summer, so pretty. And our hens and chicks. We put in our tomatoes last weekend. We've got, <clears throat> we've got like some cucumbers and squash down the end, but then we have one of each of our faves down here and we're gonna be stringing them up to this pole that's up above. Um, and somehow, for whatever reason, I'm growing leeks at the end of every garden bed this year. And so we have those there too. Here harvesting our chamomile for tea in the winter. We have our sunflower field growing back there. Um, our horseradish is flowering, which is just charming. Um, another crop of garlic right here. Coming in, we have marigolds and nasturtiums. These literally just popped up this morning. Um, in the back, we have some pole beans that are going to climb up this trellis and some cucumbers that we started in the greenhouse along with some morning glory and bindweed that we have to fight back. This is the super early bed we planted um, with things like broccoli rob and lettuce and spinach. And we have been harvesting it and we have some of those yummy turnips in there. Oh, they're so yummy. Arugula that needs to get harvested big time. Cilantro, yum. And so soon this will get harvested um, all and we'll plant something else there. So our plants are not as big and beautiful as the plants that everyone else got in our program because we started them in our own greenhouse, which doesn't have the same je ne sais quoi as Cedar Rock Gardens. So we have our little baby peppers all growing here in their little nests. Um, and then we have our sunflower field, another one there, another quinoa patch, which is a new development. Um, we have an array here of brassicas, we have purple cauliflower, regular cauliflower, um, some broccoli over there. Our little squash habitat, we're waiting for them to come on strong before we pluck out a few. With that zucchini and summer squash happening. Um, this is our field of um, speckled Roman tomato. Do you like how I call it a field? It's not really a field, is it? Um, these are the best for canning and making sauce because uh, they have such thick walls. So we have a special crop of that. Um, there's some cool um, flowering clover. We had planted this as a cover crop and most of it got um, plowed in. Um, but this one came back up and it's so pretty. It will attract the bees. We have another water barrel here on the corner um, to harvest our water. Here's a bed. You can see the difference between our seedlings and cedar rock seedlings. Theirs are like mega. Um, but we packed this thing full of peppers and eggplant. Um, and those flowers in between are California poppies. I just kind of let them go wherever they're growing because they're pretty. And right now, um, along the edge, we have a lot of beautiful um, columbine coming in. And we have, that's an incredible oregano crop to the right and left of the columbine. It's just, we've been cutting it already and drying it. And this is our onion zone. Um, these are shallots, looking fantastic. These are actually shallots that we saved from last year, and they were small, and so we replanted them. And then we have our yellow onion. This is the, the stairs that Steve calls the stairs of death. Um, this is the piece of paper I used to get the dead bird out of my room this morning. The cat brought in. First of all, gorgeous purple chives coming in, the flowering now. All along the end. And you can eat the flowers, you can eat the flowers and the, the chives themselves. You can see more of this orach coming up everywhere. So these two beds do a long view. 
our beds that we're going to be planting in the next couple of days um, we haven't gotten to yet. That one's been overrun by fennel uh, that's self-seeded. Dana asks, how does the straw help? So straw um, is, a, is a mulch and what it does is it helps suppress weeds um, and it helps keep the uh, soil moist so it cuts down on needing to water. Um, you always want to make sure that your soil is protected at all times. It's like a little living being in there with all of its critters and ecosystems. So anything you can do to support your soil health with mulch is the way to go. And also who wants to do all that weeding. Um, and, and you can use other things besides straw. You can use salt marsh hay. Um, you can even use cardboard. It's not very pretty. So anything that creates that kind of cover. Um, then, look at I love pretty things in little places. So this is one of those beds, if you remember in our first video, um, it had a cold frame on it. So we started these super early. Um, now we have some uh, arugula that's starting to go to seed, but tons of lettuce in here that we harvest all the time. These ridiculous potato volunteers, and I have, can't, don't have the heart to pull them out. So clearly we're just gonna be all about potatoes this year. And then we have some scallions, more cilantro, can never have enough, um, but we have to pick it soon because it's starting to bolt a little bit. And then we had more broccoli robin here, which is also starting to flower, so we're gonna eat that. Um, what else is in here? More of these turnips that I love, the salad turnips. And then this is a bed we just planted. I throw nets on it to keep the cats out to various and if I don't take the net off in time, then the greens grow through it, and then it's a hassle to get off, so I have to deal with that. But we have our carrots starting in here. Um, more of these scallions, and of course weeds everywhere that need to be pulled out. Beets coming up. And um, I got some parsnips here on the, on the end coming up. So I have, to, I have to get in this and deal with this today. Um, anyone want to come and weed my gravel path? You're more than welcome to drop by. <laughs> That. So this is a little bit funny, a little bit not funny. Um, remember when I planted peas angrily? <laughs> well, let me tell you, they were not happy. And I had to replant them like five times. And like there's certain areas where it's like, what's wrong over here? Like, what's the problem here? How many seeds do I have to put there in order to get a pea? Anyway, there's, a, there's some bad mojo over here with these peas. I don't know what to do to help you. These peas, on the other hand, are overjoyed. These are snap peas. They're living the dream. Um, so kudos to you. And then we put in a crop of, of baby kale. I just love it. And so what you can do here with these is you can cut them and you can see this little center point where the new leaves are coming in. As long as you don't damage that, you can just keep cutting them down and putting them in your smoothies or your salad and they'll just keep on going. So we have to do some more planting in here, but I keep chucking things in here. Couple broccoli, big blank space, and then some kale and Swiss chard. It's starting to get leaf miners. These are truly horrific. I mean, they literally are just doing what they're saying they're doing. And the only, and you can see they have these dreaded little eggs on the back. I don't know if you can see that. The only thing you can do is rub them off. Drives you crazy. And then you can also clip these leaves and throw them in the trash, not in your compost. And that's the best way. They impact spinach. Um, beets and Swiss chard. Here comes the trash truck, so it's going to get noisy. This is another bed of potatoes further along than the other ones. They're coming up. And I think that's kind of it. And then I've been fixing our little perennial bed down here. Going to take care of these beds today with some more, like maybe beans and beets and carrots. Get away from the trash truck. And then we can give you the long view down this herb bed that we're going to be working on today. So we have like thyme, bronze fennel, sorrel, onion, lemon balm, 8 million sunflowers that need to be harvested out. So we're going to be planting a lot in the cilantro. This is sort of our wild herb garden down the side. And then in the distance there, you can see raspberries, um, etc. Um, is there a question there, Steve? Yeah. 
Can you add more soil as the potatoes grow? You can add more soil and, and hill the soil up around the potato, but you can also use the, the, the leaves of the potato, but you can also use straw or um, other kinds of mulch. It's mainly creating like shade in, around those plants and so you don't have to have tons of soil on hand. I don't know if that answers your question, but that is our little root around the garden. Do we have a lot of power left on this phone? So if anyone, you know, feel free to text me any questions, um, but now is the time to make sure you have all of your summer seeds and seedlings in. You can check out our, my latest post that says what should be in by now. Um, and you still have um, more time to get such stuff in in the next couple weeks. Any other questions? Thank you everybody. Bye.